Late summer is really the time of tromboncino. You can see this one plant's got one baby up there. One, two, three, four. See that snaky one there? Four fruit on it. And this plant at the back. There's that one, which is quite big already now. And <laughs> this one, which is one of those funny ones that is just so thick, like not super long, but gosh, so thick. And that end seems to be kind of turning brown, so I think we need to harvest this ASAP and use as a zucchini. Can't leave this one to be a pumpkin because it's got a bit of damage at the end. And our kangaroo apples have just gone nuts. I've been pruning this all the time and yet it's, it's still taking over. Such a vigorous grower. So I think we have more than enough to make some jams this year. Of course, only pick the really ripe fruit so when it turns red. So even these orange ones, which look like beautiful Christmas lights, are not quite ready yet. You can sometimes wait for them to drop off or yeah just wait till you see the red colour change. Our scarlet runner beans have been pumping out stunning flowers, stunning pink red flowers this whole summer but in Melbourne they are a late flowering bean so you can see we've got our first beans coming along now. We say don't love the heat. They can't set fruit in the heat. So some people do come around and mist their plants with cold water in the morning and that helps fruit set. But yeah, we just don't have time to do things like that. So we'll work with nature. So lots of baby beans now. This archway is usually studded with beans by late summer and through into autumn. You can see how pretty the flowers are. So we just enjoy them for their beautiful flowers over summer. And I can grow it on one of our shadier arches here. Because it doesn't it likes a bit of shade and it won't set fruit when it's too hot. So yeah, so enjoy its flowers and then its delicious beans. So I would for, for fresh eating. I'll pick them slightly bigger than this. They can get as long as your arm, but you know, the outside can get tough and then they become more of a shelling bean. So I'd leave this a little bit longer and then harvest. They're really yum. One of our favorite beans to eat. I also just spotted our first decorative gourd. There's one there. And I'll show you over here another one with a flower on its end that's just opened up today. So these were mostly growing for their looks. They can be eaten of course but you know how cool is that? Looks like it's been dipped in paint and the colour will get more intense as they ripen. So I look forward to showing you that. In our crazy arbour we've got our Coco growing of course which is the most dominant one that's covering here. You can see that in our separate Choco video about how we've been using the shoots and yes that's another task that we've been doing constantly is pinching out the shoots. You can see that one's been pinched you know otherwise it goes wild. Oh my gosh look at that. Gone off the end. Gone off the end of the arbor. What's it, where is it gonna go now? Maybe we'll train it. Oh onto our plot tree. I mean that seems to be what it's naturally heading towards. <laughs> so I don't see any fruit or flowers just yet but I think we're not too far off because it's usually a late summer early autumn producing. 
lots and lots of different types of beans on our edge. Got some lazy housewife. Cute name, but maybe a bit un-PC in today's <laughs> society. I think it might need a rebrand. Lazy housewife slash house husband. And we've got some frost beans climbing through there too. And lots of pumpkins. Including this Kuru one, which is one of our favourites. Tastes like chestnut. Oh, who's woken up? Hello. And uh, do you have a good nap? Good nap in the garden bed? Frost beans are coming up beautifully. We've got plenty of fresh beans, so we're leaving these as a shelling bean this year. Gosh, I blinked and missed this cucumber. Far out. This is an Armenian variety, which does get big, but I'm not sure to let it get that big. Oh my gosh. I was busy watching like these small, there were a few small ones around here and I was like, oh, they're not getting bigger. They're not getting bigger. And then suddenly one day I noticed this hiding at the back. It was so camouflaged. Yeah, that's like, like a gourd now. What are we meant to do with this? It's crazy. Because we haven't needed any cucumbers. We haven't even been harvesting our standard ones, which I've got to get around to. Because it's a bunch in the fridge still. And so many babies on the way. I also spotted our first red snake bean. I might have left that one go for too long, starting to bulge. But I am so happy. Look, you can see more flowers there. So happy because I can see that plant um, coming up here. But there it is. So it's doing pretty well. Hopefully. We get all them one bean off it. Oh yeah, there, there we go. There's a second one at least. Got two beans this season. Oh, three maybe. That little baby set. Oh, there's actually a whole bunch facing in. I didn't even see those. Gonna have to keep an eye on them. I think they're a bit small right now. Wow, that's, got, that's long already, but thin. Yeah, but not too far off harvesting. I can't wait to actually do a proper stir fry with more than like one bean. <laughs> just spotted this lemon guava. This was just planted last year and it is getting overrun by our pepinos. Which look fantastic. And there's some flowers on the way. But yeah, I might have to cut it back. <laughs> Give it some breathing space. I can't even tell where that is right now. And next to it, we have strawberry guava, which is a later fruiting variety. It's got some flowers, beautiful flowers. It does have some fruit as well. I think it had two flushes of flowers this year because I remember seeing them earlier and that must have formed that fruit. And now we're getting a second flush. So fuzzy and cool like pom-pom balls. We love the flavour of these. You know some people find guava musky but the, I, I can't taste it at all. And I love these. They're so sweet and fragrant. Beautiful chicory flowers. Chicory is so stunning but like that purple colour you don't see that much in the garden and they're very drought tolerant as a leafy green so we do enjoy those over summer this one's grown under the canopy of our grapefruit tree which is currently studded with fruit i also wanted to show you these beautiful and unusual flowers so they're kind of quite twirly and they're called snail vine. 
they're really beautiful and fragranced as well so this is overwintered from last year I didn't realize I could survive Melbourne's winter but it has so there's way too much going on in this arch there's snail vine there's pumpkins a few different types curry and sugar pumpkin see another one up there there's beans giant of Stuttgart and there's snail vine and on this side our raspberries now look at this these are heritage raspberry which you will you can see in our our top five berries to grow tour but there's flowers again they're ever bearing so twice a year early spring to summer and then again in autumn a smaller harvest so it's putting out heaps of new shoots and there's flowers as well so more raspberries on the way and we've got a freezer full of them but we will never say no to more berries now another thing we've had to do is to tame our new guinea bean arch new guinea bean is so vigorous and the shoots were starting to go everywhere so having to cut that back you can see loads of baby fruit on there i'm not sure how much of that is going to form because we don't hand pollinate so we just let the bees do that show you walking around how crazy this is looking look at that so beautiful framing our dahlias underneath and there's some more baby fruit on this side loads more beautiful dahlias in full bloom These are Cafe Olé, the dinner plate sized dahlias and this light pink caramel colour, it's so beautiful. Some pomegranates getting big, these stunning pom-pom dahlias which come back year after year are now back and in full flower like a gorgeous peachy sunset color we leave our dahlias in the soil all winter we don't lift the tubers because we've got quite sandy soil if you've got heavy soil you're best off storing them somewhere dry but ours come back reliably year after year and these are such a stunner Nashi pears are getting to a really good size. I think they're quite close to harvest. Let's see. We've, we've picked one that was more yellow. And that was delicious. So these are pretty close. I usually wait to see a bit more colour change than that. So that's still quite green. It's just a tinge of yellow. I want to see a bit more yellow, but yeah, that's a beautiful size pink lady apples getting close to full size as well we've obviously had to bag them all because we get native birds or you know fruit fly definitely an issue I've got a separate video showing you how devastating they've been this year in our garden Queensland fruit fly that is now I just have to show you this this is a day lily as its name suggests it only opens for a day so this will be gone for sure by tomorrow not only pretty to look at but it is edible in Chinese cuisine it's a very commonly used ingredient it translates to yellow flower which is what it is literally so you use the buds and I can't remember if the leaves were edible too but definitely the flowers so pretty 
so bright. And just next to our dahlias, for those who followed us for a while, you remember last year we had fig leaf gourd up this beautiful arbor next to our chicken coop. Now that got out of hand, so we, we had about 300 kilos off that, but it was taking over the garden beds that it was planted in, which is not a great place to plant it in because it needs its own space. So this year I've replaced it with choco. I'm hoping it's a little less crazy than fig leaf gourd, but by the looks of it, maybe I'm going to have the same problem. It's so beautiful and lush. It's starting to cover the top of the arbor. And it's climbing all the way along, although I haven't seen any flowers yet. I believe in our climate, it may not flower till late summer and fruit into early autumn. But we'll see. I've got here kabucha pumpkin. How cute is that? I'll do a full pumpkin tour, a gourd tour, because I've had I had a poll on Instagram and I think that was the winner. But I'll also do a chili one after that because that came second. And a hyacinth bean making the climb up here. Just trying to create lots of shade for our chicken coop in case we get those 40 degree days. So I'm training whatever I can up along here to help give the girls more shade. Including this grapevine, which you'll see in our fruit tour video. This is a strawberry grape. Oh, and here's where the fig leaf gourd ended up. Oh, this is another thing I I'm going to do a, a separate guide on. So we've replanted one afresh, pulled the other one out, chopped it down over winter and planted it back here now. Still clambering up our fig tree, but we hope on this side it will be more manageable and not tapping into our main veggie beds. Oh my gosh, I just spotted in this shrubbery, this crazy wild section of our garden. Belladonna lily. It's just started flowering. Now let's end it here. I could go all day as you know. Um, I'm trialing different formats so let me know in the comments below if you enjoy these quick evening vlogs just updating you on some interesting things that I've noticed in the garden each day. Probably won't do them every day but maybe a few times a week. So let me know if you prefer these or you like more in-depth tours focused on specific plant groups like pumpkins or chilies or tomatoes or if you like all of them. Let me know and as always please do like and subscribe to our channel. That really gives us so much support and means we can keep educating and making the world greener, one gardener at a time. That's all from me. Thanks and see you next time.